Hey guys, Tegan here from BlueSense Digital. And in this video, I just wanna quickly go over the question of, is there a way to essentially edit hundreds or thousands, even thousands of products in the Merchant Center based on a certain set of criteria um, using some sort of rule without having to go and edit each product individually. So for example, editing um, or let's say adding the brand name at the back end of a shopping title or let's say editing an attribute, so adding a label to a, um, to a product in the Merchant Center so that you can assign them accordingly in the Google Ads account. Um, so there is a way to do that and there's a feed rules section in the Merchant Center. So I'm gonna go through that in, this, in a second because this is an ex exceptionally powerful um, feature that yeah, is super handy to, to have in your back pocket. So if you head into the Merchant Center, hit on or click on products, click on feeds, and then obviously you'll see your feeds here. Go into the content API feed or the primary feed in your account. And then up at the top here, you'll see feed rules. So click on feed rules. And in this case, what I wanna do is assign a custom label to a certain set of products so that when I go into Google Ads and I segment by so if let's say I wanna segment this category by custom label over here, so custom label zero, I've got a label that can, or that is assigned to a certain custom set of products and I can just select that custom label and add a certain set of products into my campaign. So that is what I'm setting up at the moment and I'll go over another quick example towards the end. So as you can see here, I've added multiple custom labels in the past or custom label zeros in the past um, obviously within your processed attributes section, you can choose whatever um, attribute you wanna edit using a feed rule. So in this case, we've already chosen an attributes, already used the custom label zero attribute. So I'm just gonna go into this. Um, if you've obviously never used an attribute before, just select that attribute from scratch under that, that blue plus icon. So as you can see here, we've got multiple um, labels assigned already um, and we're going to add another one so specifically for the end tables that's the group that we want to kind of customize so to add another segment to your rule just hit add source over here and as you can see we're going to or we want to set the cut so in this case we want to choose a set of conditions that will essentially trigger this rule to fire um, and then we want to set this attribute to a certain value so the criteria that I want to essentially match with is firstly with regards to the title. So if the, sorry, if the title, so if the title, so the content API title contains, um, we're gonna say end, end table. So if the title contains end table, um, and then we, we only want the, the non drop shipped end tables. So we're gonna add another layer to this and um, brand. So content API brand does not contain a DSZ. That's the brand name of our, of our drop shipped products. So brand does not contain DSZ. Then we're gonna set custom label zero to a constant value. And I'm gonna type that here. So we'll call that end table non we'll call that end tables non drop shipped and we'll add that as a constant value um, so once you've added your rule in like that don't edit edit anything else on this page um, just hit ok and we should we should see Okay, so our rule is created here. So let's just look at that one more time. So if the title contains end table and the brand name or the brand does not contain DSC, we'll set the custom label zero to this name over here. So we're gonna hit okay and we're gonna save that as a draft. Sometimes you'll see all the edits that will be made based on those feed rules appear on the right here um, and sometimes you won't. I'm not sure why that's the case but I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see if this does actually work in just a second. Um, so we'll save that as a draft and it'll take us back to the feed section. 
or the feed rules section. And then over here, you can see um, we are still, we haven't applied these changes yet. This is still in draft form. So we've got custom label zero. This is what it's currently set to. And this is the new draft. As you can see, this is the aspect down here. So uh, title contains end table plus one condition, which is the dropship or the, the DSZ brand and set to end tables uh, non dropship. So that's the aspect that we're adding there. So if we're happy with that, we can just hit apply. And there we go. So we've added our feed rule. This does, or these feed rules do take quite a while to start kicking in. Um, so I'd recommend giving that at least three to four hours before essentially looking to see if that attribute has been assigned to those specific products. How you can check this, and I'll show you in this example, um, for, for this example here, for the coffee tables, where we've, where we've assigned this custom label already. So if you go to the product section and you search for, let's just search for a title. Title contains coffee table. Let's just add another E in there. So let's say for example, we go into this product here and if your feed rule is working correctly under the custom label zero attribute, oh sorry, under the custom label zero attribute, you'll see the the um, value that's been assigned to that attribute through or via that feed rule. So as you can see, that's working correctly. Um, we'll just have to wait and see if that feed rule works correctly for the end tables as well. And if it does, that uh, custom label will get pushed into Google Ads as well. And we can then segment products within our campaign using that specific rule. Now, let's say for example, we wanted to use a feed rule for something else. So we wanted to edit our product titles or descriptions. Um, so let's just go back into our primary feed, then head to feed rules again. And now we want to, let's say, edit a certain word in our title, or let's say in our product description. So if we wanted to add a new attribute to the section, we hit the plus icon, um, choose our attribute. So just type that, sorry, type that in up here, description. Um, now we're going into the description attribute. So just to reference, there are two sections here in the feed rule section. Number one is the data sources section, which changes the entire attribute itself. And then there's also the modification section down here, which modifies the um, the attribute based on certain criteria. So for, for a description, if we wanna change a couple words in a description, um, we're not gonna be using the data sources section because that'll change the description completely. We're only gonna be using the modification section. So close anything that's up here, um, hit add modification, then Let's say, for example, we wanted to change the word furniture to wooden furniture. So every time the word furniture is mentioned in a product description, it gets changed to wooden furniture. So what we're going to do is put a trigger in here. So description, description contains the word furniture. Um, and then we're going to find and replace the word furniture for wooden furniture. Um, and there you go. So hit OK, save as draft, and then go and apply it as I just did in the previous example. So again, very powerful way of conveniently managing and editing your product feed in the Merchant Center without having to go through products one by one and um, manually make those edits to each product. So hopefully that was a help. If you found that valuable, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cool, bye for now.